Good day, Trooper Cody making one of our videos, one of our Western videos that was really complicated. It really had to be made into three. Pressure's really on. I'm just uh, mopping his brow here because it's been a hell of a job under these floodlights and cast and crew standing around. And stay, take it easy, mate. Take it easy. Should be right. So what we're going to talk about is another one of the aspects of the Western movies. And have you seen John Wayne in Red River? 1950, that movie was made, 1950. Red River, brilliant, brilliant John Wayne classic. So what happened is that 1958, a guy called Charles Warren, he's involved in making a movie about a cattle drive. So this is Cattle Empire of 1958. Very successful movie, a lot of critical acclaim, and it's all about this massive cattle drive, it's similar to what John Wayne's movie was about. So what had happened with these two movies, these two cowboy movies, is that there'd been a new invention in town. There was a new invention in town. So that new invention, hit America in commercially in 1946. It had been around in America since 1928, but was very limited. 1946 is seen as the date when it economically explodes. In the UK, it was a little while after, but still 1946 when you got a couple of channels. I'll let the cat out of the bag. The invention's television, and yes, September of 1956, 10 years later, Australia gets television. So the thing about TV is there is something about TV that Westerns, people just love Westerns. They cannot get enough of Westerns on television. By 1949, only three years after TV has been introduced in America, We've got a couple of programs that are off the chart with ratings. And they are Hopalong Cassidy and The Lone Ranger. These two shows, not sure when Clayton Moore was in The Lone Ranger, but these two shows are showing dominance over other programming. And so the studios start to think westerns are the way to go and they start pumping out various westerns. They call the golden age of the Western. They say that that was started in 1955. And that is the year that, the, that Clint Walker, Cheyenne, Gunsmoke first started. The Life and Times of Wyatt Earp. There's so many shows, if you're a boomer, that these will really hit home to you. To be a boomer, you were born between 1946 and 1964, and I know people of my age, we all grew up just loving westerns. By 1958, there were 33 different western series showing on American television. 33 different ones. This had resulted in hundreds and hundreds of items of merchandising. You just can't name it all. Cups, mugs, spoons, games, lunch pails, hats, clothing, t-shirt, pajamas, bed sheets. It's massive. What had happened is that NBC hit the nail on the head with a show on a Wednesday night I don't know why this was in America, but Wednesday night was prime time American TV. And they'd hit the nail on the head with a show that basically said, you other channels, you might as well just shut down for the night because you cannot compete with this show. And that show was Wagon Train. It was so enormously successful that CBS were panic stricken trying to work out how they could possibly come up with something to beat Wagon Train. 
Now, this is why I mentioned Charles Warren and his movie Cattle Empire of 1958 and John Wayne who, with Red River because some CBS exec says, how about we make a western about a cattle drive and we're not going to film it in a studio. We're not going to film it at Inverson Ranch or any of those Hollywood dude ranches. We are going to find locations out in the boonies, in the fair income country, and that's where we're going to film this show about a cattle drive. Okay, that's a great idea. Charles Warren comes on board. He's going to direct it. It all seems really, it seems like a great idea. How could it possibly fail? Okay, we're going to pick an up and coming fabulous actor and he's going to be the star of the show and then we'll fill some other characters. So they say yes, they all agree. So everybody is agreed that they are going to use this fabulous up and coming actor who can't go wrong and will make the show a hit. And you know who that actor is, don't you? Yes, you. No, you don't. Well, some of you might have got it, because I'm sure some of you were going to say Clint Eastwood, or you did say Clint Eastwood, but no. We are actually talking about Eric Fleming. Eric Fleming was supposed to be the star of the show. He was supposed to be the... Oh, I don't know. What... So Eric Fleming was supposed to be the star stand out of the show and the rest of the show would have other actors, bit actors, some of whom Charles Warren brought from Cattle Empire movie. He brought them across because it had worked in the movie. They were going to be in the show. Everything looks like it's going to be a dream. But hang on, we better, we better get a couple of other people in the role. Who, who should we get? Let's audition for a couple of other people. They can just be sort of second rate cow punctures. Okay, I know who we'll get. Let's get Kurt Russell's dad. Now, of course, then they didn't know it was Kurt Russell's dad, but they got Bing Russell in to audition for one of these cow puncher parts. And we better not just do one. We'll better get somebody else. Who, should, who else should we get? Well, there's this young bloke. hasn't done much work. He's been digging swimming pools. He's not getting very far. Not a bad-looking chap. We'll get him in to audition him anyway. And now you're right. That was Clint Eastwood. So what happens is Clint Eastwood tells this story about how he went to audition for the part in Rawhide. Have I said yet we're talking about Rawhide? I might have forgotten. We, we, this is Rawhide, of course. So Clint Eastwood goes to audition. Clint Eastwood was told, watch Henry Fonda in the Oxbow incident. Now there's a movie I hate. I can hardly watch it. And it's because... The Oxbow Incident, I better not spoil it for you, spoiler alert, in case you haven't seen it. But anyway, I, I hate it because it's, it's sad and unjust. That's why I hate it. But in it, Henry Fonda gives a magnificent speech. And so Clint Eastwood and Bing Russell are told, learn this speech, come to the audition, you're going to give Henry Fonda's Oxbow Incident speech and we'll decide which of you two we're going to use. So Clint goes along, and Clint is going to be the second person to audition, and he's going to be present watching Bing to his. So Clint's standing there, probably not wearing a poncho and cigarillo, but Clint's there, and Bing gets up, and Bing recites Henry Fonda's speech, word perfectly, brilliantly, just as if he's a parrot mimicking every nuance of Henry Fonda's. And Clint Eastwood, okay Clint, come over mate, it's your turn now. Clint Eastwood ambles over and he says the speech, how he remembers it in his own words. It's far from word perfect. It's probably got a pause or two. It's maybe got a squint, maybe got a sneer. And when the audition was over, yep, yeah, right, don't call us, we'll call you, Bing and Clint Lee, Clint Eastwood says to this day, he left knowing Bing had got it. Bing had nailed that audition. And of course, now we know Clint Eastwood not only got the job, but then a hatred developed, an absolute hatred developed between Eric Fleming and Clint Eastwood because Eric Fleming was a consummate professional 
And he said Clint Eastwood refused to learn his lines. Just wouldn't. Just wouldn't learn. So what you've got to say, Clint, is you're right up here and you say, the river's five miles away and it's a bit sandy. That's what you've got to say. And Clint would ride up and say, well, it's only a bit of a stream and it's three hours away. Clint, that wasn't your line. No, they never said that. They let Clint do his own thing and Fleming was furious about it. Came to fisticuffs once. Depends whose version. I'll let you look that up for yourself. We know what happened. Well, sadly, Eric Fleming drowned filming in South America. And we know what happened with Clint. So because Rawhide was filmed not on a dude ranch or the Inverson ranch or any of those sky, the sky ranch or big sky ranch or any of those others, it was always deemed as the most authentic of the cowboy TV shows. It ran for eight years. It was the fourth highest rating out of all the television westerns. I won't give them in the right order because it is Bonanza and Gunsmoke and the Virginian were the top three, but not necessarily in that order. And Rawhide was number four. It was huge when it came out, huge success, huge ratings. As I say, deemed to be the most authentic of all the westerns. And why did it end? One of the reasons it ended, depending who you speak to, but one of the reasons it ended was it never was shot in colour. Some of the other shows were in colour for right from the start. Some of them changed to colour. They never moved to colour with Rawhide. Statistics for Rawhide is the first episode aired in January 1959. In that year, it was one of 15. That When I said to you about they were desperate to beat Wagon Train and that it was the boom time for Westerns, 15 new series, Western series, started in 1959, one of which was Bonanza, another one was Laramie. 67 separate television shows, Westerns, 67 separate television Westerns were made between 1949 and January of 1959. A total of 217 episodes of Rawhide were made. Some controversy because other... There's controversy about that, but 217 episodes. And the very last episode, which was shown in December of 1965. So you imagine in America, 1965, and a brand new show is in black and white. It was what would have happened if, if they'd gone to colour, but you can't. There's much more to this than politics and black and white. It's a long story. It's what I said about why this is actually three separate videos. So what really we wanted to cover here, though, was Rawhide. And the thing about Rawhide... Oh, I better not break into song, had I? Should I? Should I do a Blues Brothers? Rolling, rolling, rolling. Don't want to wake him up. So, another thing about Rawhide. Have you heard of Raymond St. Jacques? Jacques. Raymond St. I'm not sure how that was pronounced in America. But Raymond St. Jacques was a black actor. And he went into the official record books of being the very first black actor to have a role as a regular in a TV show at all, and that was in the Western Rawhide. So that was Raymond St. Jacques. Now it depends what your... Well, it just depends on what you think about these things, because some people are going to say to you, Having told, you who that, that, having told you that Raymond St. Jacques, who played Simon Blake, a drover in Rawhide, was the first black actor to get a, a, a recurring role in a television show, any television show. This was September of 1965. You might hear people say, no, 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 it's Bill Crosby. 
Bill Cosby, Cosby in I Spy. Do you remember I Spy with Robert Cobb? I loved that show as a kid. But actually, what really happened is the episode of Rawhide that was shown one night before the very first episode of I Spy. So it was Rawhide that had the first permanent black actor in it. When later the studio were asked if they did this through any sort of pressure from other groups about hiring a black actor, the studio said they didn't do it through any pressure. They did it because it was sociologically opportune, meaning they did it because it was going to make ratings, it was going to make money, it was going to help advertising, and that's the only reason they did it. So there you go, some background on a classic TV show, Rawhide, Clint Eastwood's role in it, some trivia and side facts on a great, great TV show. If you want to see more, and especially if you want to see the last, the other two parts of what this video was, because it had to be made into three separate parts, you make sure you stay tuned, come back, keep an eye out, watch what happens in the long content. We'll see you again next time. Cheers.